Let me ask you what might sound like a really odd question. Can a website address be evil? It's a serious question, and I think the answer is yes, or at least a website address can represent something evil. And I think any website address which ends with .io is representing something really evil. Now, let me clear one thing up. .io is used by lots of companies which sell cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and related products. And I'm not saying that these companies are evil. I mean, they might be. <laughs> That's a subject for another video. What I'm saying is that the .io in their website address has connections to, among other things, colonialism, racism, ethnic cleansing, and torture. Yeah, seriously, torture. And even though I suspect that many companies that use .io are not aware of its association with dark acts of past and present, I still think that they should be held responsible for their choices. Hi everyone, I'm Fredo Rockwell. And if you think, as I did until recently, that the .io is some special domain indicating a tech company or that it stands for input output, I'm here to tell you that you are sorely mistaken. But before we go any further, I'm gonna explain a few technical terms and don't worry, it'll be quick. First of all, the main part of website addresses like amazon.com or google.com are known as domains. And this bit at the end, which is commonly .com or .org or .net, is called a top-level domain, or TLD. Broadly speaking, there are two types of TLDs. There are the generic ones like .com, .net, and .org, and country code TLDs like .de for Germany or .ca for Canada. Where things get a bit more complicated is that there are some country code TLDs which are used a lot more like generic TLDs. For example, television companies and Twitch like to use .tv, even though this is actually the country code TLD for the Pacific nation of Tuvalu. Another common example is .me, which is used for people who make websites who really like themselves. Anyway, Tuvalu, who I just mentioned before, is a very small country with just under 12,000 citizens, but it makes $5 million every year from the .tv domain. That's over 11% of Tuvalu's gross domestic product, which is a fantastic benefit for the people of Tuvalu. Like .me and .tv, .io is actually a country code TLD and not a general tech-related TLD. The I and the O stand for Indian Ocean, because .io is the country code TLD for the British Indian Ocean Territory which there's a good chance you may never have heard of because it is by far the smallest of Britain's overseas dependencies by population. And I'm 100% sure that this is the case because even though the British Indian Ocean Territory, or BIOT, contains 58 different islands, its official permanent population is zero. Why zero? Well, that's a very interesting, but to be honest, really tragic story. Before 1965, the islands in the BIOT, which are also known as the Chagos Islands, had roughly 2,000 residents, who are known as the Chagosian people, and most of the islands were part of the British colony of Mauritius. But in 1965, everything changed. The British colonial powers removed the Chagos Islands from the colony of Mauritius before granting the rest of Mauritius independence a few years later. Now, that, strictly speaking, was a violation of international law, and the UN General Assembly passed a resolution which declared it to be a violation of the UN Charter. It's a matter of settled international law that when you grant a former colony independence, you have to grant that independence to all of the colony. You can't just lop off bits of it that you'd like to keep for yourself. But what the UK did after deciding to illegally keep the Chagos Islands was far, far worse. Starting in 1966, the UK began to forcefully deport the 2,000 Chagosian people from their own homes, sending most of them to live in Mauritius and a few to the Seychelles. It's the sort of thing that today might be called ethnic cleansing, and if it happened during an armed conflict, that could be considered a war crime. Now, some people might object to me calling this ethnic cleansing as that term usually denotes a racist motivation. 
But there is evidence that the British officials who carried out these terrible acts were in fact racist. In one 1966 cable, the Chagossian people were referred to as, quote, a few Tarzans or Man Fridays. Tarzan, you probably know. The term Man Friday refers to a character from Robinson Crusoe. It was his manservant. These are both really offensive ways to refer to anyone. British officials also went out of their way to cover up the fact that the Chagossian people were the native population of the Chagos Islands. And they also classified all Chagossians as migrant workers. Imagine being labeled a migrant in your own home country. So why would the United Kingdom want to totally depopulate the Chagos Islands? Well, it all came down to Cold War geopolitics. The UK wanted to lease the biggest of the Chagos Islands, Diego Garcia, to the US Navy. The Navy wanted to build a base there, ideally without anything as inconvenient or awkward as a native population to deal with, so that they could have a naval base in an extremely strategic position, right in the middle of the Indian Ocean, right next to one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. And so the British essentially gave Diego Garcia to the United States in exchange for $11 million in defense subsidies. The US Navy began building its base there in 1971, and that base has been there ever since. Britain still technically rules the Chagos Islands through this thing they call the BIOT. And even though it doesn't have a permanent population, the BIOT does have a commissioner who works from an office in London at the Foreign Office. Plus a coat of arms and a flag. Cause you know, Britain. But almost everyone who's stationed in the BIOT, with a very few exceptions, answers to the American government. As I mentioned before, lots of multi-billion dollar tech companies like OpenSea, Etherscan, and Metamask use the .io TLD for their website addresses. And some, like Gate.io, Apollo.io, and Smile.io actually use it in their brand name. I don't own a multi-billion dollar tech company, but if I did, just the information I've given you so far would be enough to make me think that maybe using .io for my main website domain would not be a good idea, and it certainly wouldn't be a good idea to use it in my actual company name. Who wants a company name associated with racism, forced depopulation, and violations of international law? But, but wait, we're just getting started. We're still in the top half of the iceberg of .io evil. During the administration of U.S. President George W. Bush, the U.S. military base on the island of Diego Garcia in the Chagos Islands was used as a CIA black site to torture people. You see, because there is no local population on Diego Garcia, the U.S. government can kind of do what it wants without having to worry about local law enforcement or local media paying any attention to what they're doing. In fact, to me, the BIOT appears to be a sort of legal free zone in the same way that America uses the base in Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. So yeah, Diego Garcia makes a perfect spot for the US government to take people that it can't legally arrest or imprison and torture them. The evidence that this took place is from a 2015 interview in Vice with Colin Powell's former chief of staff, Lawrence Wilkerson. He claimed that Diego Garcia was used as a place for, quote, nefarious activities by the CIA for weeks at a time. The British government has so far refused to acknowledge these alleged events, but they have publicly apologized for allowing the U.S. to twice use Diego Garcia as a refueling stop while transporting terrorist suspects to other black sites, something the U.S. government calls extraordinary rendition. Just to be clear, when we're talking about nefarious activities or extraordinary rendition, we're talking about torture. We don't know exactly what kind of torture was engaged in in Diego Garcia, but just to be clear, there is no form of torture that is ever acceptable. Torture of any kind carried out anywhere in the world is a crime. And it's also a really stupid way to gather intelligence. Jesse Ventura, a former Navy SEAL, professional wrestler, and governor of Minnesota, so hardly a lefty snowflake, explained how stupid one form of torture, waterboarding is, in this interview with Larry King. I'll put it to you this way. You give me a waterboard, Dick Cheney, and one hour, and I'll have him confess to the Sharon Tate murders. <laughs> it's torture, Larry. So yeah, 
When I see a company using the .io domain, I see racism, forced deportation, violations of international law, and torture. Believe it or not though, there's more. Remember how I mentioned that the people of Tuvalu make $5 million a year from the proceeds of the .tv TLD? Guess how much the .io TLD generates for the Chagosian people each year? $1 million? $5 million? $10 million? It must be a lot, because registering a .io domain costs $60 per year. It's one of the most expensive TLDs on the market. Well, actually, as far as I've been able to tell, the Chagosian people make a big fat $0 a year from the .io TLD. And this is the country code TLD that represents their home. And I know what some of you are probably thinking, the Chagos Islands are ruled by the British, so the UK government must be trousering all this dosh, right? Wrong. And this really surprised me. The estimated $7 million per year, which is allegedly generated by the .io TLD, goes, at least initially, to a private company based in Washington State, USA. And then after that, well, I don't know. It's all really weird to me, and in my opinion, it's not at all clear. But according to the three different leaders of the Chagosian people that I spoke to in preparation for this video, none of that money goes to them. The .io TLD was first created in 1997, and the rights to sell it were delegated to a British company called the Internet Computer Bureau, or ICB, run by an entrepreneur named Paul Kane. Kane's company also ran the country code TLDs .ac and .sh, which are for two other British dependencies, Ascension Island and St. Helena. In a 2014 interview, Kane claimed he had paid revenues from these TLDs to the British state, and that, quote, profits are distributed to the authorities for them to operate services as they see fit. He continued saying, each of the overseas territories has an account, and the funds are deposited there because obviously the territories have expenses that they incur, and it's offsetting that. This sounds great, but the problem is that the British state, which Kane refers to, has on multiple occasions denied ever receiving any money from him for the .io TLD. In 2015, in response to a Freedom of Information request, the British Foreign Office stated, quote, neither the UK government nor the BIOT administration receives revenue from the sale of .io domains, which are administered independently by the ICB. In 2017, Paul Kane sold ICB to an American company called Affilius for $70 million in cash. And then, in 2020, Affilius was sold to Bellevue, Washington-based Donuts, Inc. Now, I emailed Donuts, Inc. to get their side of the story because, of course, I try to be fair and sometimes I get my facts wrong. I asked for an official company statement about the .io TLD controversy, and I even offered to interview a representative of the company in this video but no one ever replied to any of my emails. Oh, they read my emails, as far as I can tell, repeatedly and in multiple countries. I use a Gmail widget called Streak, which tracks email openings. Not an advertisement, by the way. It's not 100% accurate, but usually it's pretty accurate. It gives you a fairly good idea of what's happened to your email after you've sent it. According to Streak, the four emails I sent to Donut Inc.'s public relations team were opened a total of 166 times in five different states, Washington, Oregon, California, Michigan, and New Jersey, and in the East Anglia region of the UK, but I never got an answer. And that's all I'm going to say about Donuts Inc., so I leave it up to you, the viewer, to draw your own conclusion. Okay, I've mentioned a couple times that the .io TLD is used by tech companies. So the question is, is that okay? Should these tech companies be held responsible at all for the many tragic and I would say evil acts which are related to the .io TLD? I put this exact question to many of the companies which use .io and, and really I didn't get very many responses. Most of these companies like OpenSea, Etherscan, and Gate.io just ignored me. I got a response from MetaMask, sort of, saying the team did not respond on this. A member of Apollo.io support let me send him questions, but his only reply was to tell me to check the About page for information, which of course doesn't make any mention of .io, and he suggested I send an email to the support team, 
which I did, and someone in Nigeria read it, but no one replied to it. At the end of our chat, the customer service agent said, awesome, if you have any other questions, just message us and we'll be glad to help. Have a great day. I thought this was a really weird way to end a conversation which had focused on racism, colonialism, forced deportation, and torture. I got the most engagement with a member of the support team from Smile.io who replied, Smile's core values are vastly different from the actions you describe, and I am sure the leadership is unaware of this dark history. Thanks for this information. I will pass it along to our leadership for their consideration. When I asked how could the leadership not be aware of what its name represents, the customer service agent thanked me for reaching out, wished me a wonderful day, and abruptly ended the chat. Should companies using .io for their website addresses, or even worse, using it as part of their names, be able to justify its use by just claiming they didn't know? I don't think so. That's just my opinion, but here's my reasoning. If you Google .io domain, it's pretty easy to find articles talking about this exact controversy, and there's even a fairly prominent example of a company realizing how bad .io is and dropping it from their domain. This is the graph drawing software, previously known as Draw.io, which changed its name in 2020 to Diagram.net. In the blog post announcing the change, the company cited both the moral case for not using .io and also the security risk, as international pressure could cause .io to disappear one day. Hi, Editing Fredo here. I've made a slight mistake. Diagrams.net did cite security concerns for leaving .io, just different ones than I named. There are numerous other articles, which I will link to in a pinned comment, citing the concerns that I mention here. Now, back to the program. Disappear? Is that a legitimate threat? How could that happen? I gotta be honest with you, I, I don't really honestly know. I don't entirely understand the politics of country code TLDs. I can tell you, it looks shady as heck. I mean, giving the revenue from a country code TLD to a private company to administer. I don't really understand how that's allowed to happen. But there is a chance, a small chance, that the British could lose control of the Chagos Islands in the near future. In 2019, the judges on the International Court of Justice ruled 13 to 1 that Britain had failed to fully decolonize Mauritius, and also ruled by 13 votes to 1 that, quote, the United Kingdom is under an obligation to bring to an end its administration of the Chagos Archipelago as rapidly as possible. And of course, there are the considerations of the Chagosian people which have to be taken into account. They are not the same as the views of the Mauritian government. And there are some groups of Chagosian people who, and this might surprise you, prefer to be ruled by the British and not Mauritius. But whatever their stance, every Chagosian leader I spoke to while making this video thinks that the Chagosian people have the right to be listened to and then to decide their own future. That's just obviously the right and moral thing to do, right? And I also think that, like the people of Tuvalu, the Chagosian people should have the right to all of the revenue which is generated from the TLD which represents their home. And in fact, I don't even understand why this isn't happening already. How, how does this happen? Thanks for watching. So, what do you think of the .io TLD now? Do you think it's evil? Does it make you think of the terrible things which have been done to the Chagosian people? Or do you have a different reaction? Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.